Okay. Am I on? Okay. Um, thank you very much. We appreciate your attendance. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is within the speeding agility, uh, speeding training agility, really going to look, work on locomotor skills and how that moves into global movement patterns. So we want to start out with something called a spherical model for movement. And what that means is every human being is designed to occupy a space. I'm 5'10". At 5'10", I am designed to occupy as much movement, as much space as I can given my frame. What we tend to see is as people get older, you might have somebody when they're younger could get out and drive into these three planes of motion, but all of a sudden they get older and they get there and you start seeing the sphere start shrinking down on them. There are generally three components we look at that creates the sphere. One is mobility. Do I have enough mobility to get myself out to whatever that end point is and whatever plane of motion I decide? If it's rotation, it doesn't matter. The other point is stability. Do, can I, am I stable enough? I might have somebody who has great mobility. They can get here, and then they have to drag themselves back out of it. So the point is, can I get out to the end of my range, my threshold point, and then bring myself back in? The other part, the last part of that we look at is the strength portion, meaning if I have external loads driving on my body. So now I grab a 20 pound dumbbell and I'm gonna take a 20 down, pound dumbbell out to that range. And to and reach that dumbbell, I have the weight now trying to deform my sphere and I've gotta control that. So when we look at human motion, and especially in the general global conditioning, we wanna make sure that people can use all three planes of motion within the sphere in which they were designed to occupy. The Gray Institute, uh, Nick before mentioned Gary Gray. Gary Gray calls this most ability. We're gonna jump over the slide because we have to keep moving, but in essence, it's just a perfect blend. I have stability here, I have mobility here, I need to find that perfect blend. If I am so mobile and I cannot control it, it's not good. But if I'm so stable, I can't move, it's not good. And trying to find that perfect blend where I have motion and stability and that perfect balance. Principles of, pl of applied functional science. We know every day that we deal with gravity. Gravity is an important thing when you're considering training and you're working with your clients. We deal with gravity. So understanding the role that gravity is gonna play in that. The other part is ground reaction forces. So when I step into the ground, on the, the ground doesn't give, it's not a marshmallow, it's gonna push back. So I have ground reaction forces. I also have mass and momentum. I'm 175 pounds. If I start moving and have to go through some more, you know, again, that pattern, can I decelerate the mass and momentum of my body within that sphere? And planes of motion. Human body is designed in three planes of motion and I'm not sure who it was earlier, talked about the transverse plane. Critical, critical, critical plane of the three planes. All three planes are important, but the transverse plane we tend to see get lost. And so we wanna make sure that people are moving three-dimensionally. All right, so the concept of this is based on something called biotensegrity. And in this, mo right there, that's, that's the model on the top right is called the tensegrity model. And if there's anybody old enough in here who remember these, back in the 60s, we actually played with these things. They're dowels held together by rubber bands. And the point on a tensegrity model, if I take anywhere on that band or on that dowel and I push on it, the whole thing is gonna change. It's the, it will deform the whole system. That whole structure will change. The human body works in similar way. Our whole skeleton technically floats in a fascial network. So we have connective tissue in the fascia and everything is interrelated. So that's why we always hear people sometimes will talk about, you're gonna train integrated movement patterns and not isolated muscles. We're not designed to work in this whole bicep, tricep type of thing. Um, and then through, not just through isolation, but um, taking in the effects of gravity as we mentioned earlier. So biotensegrity was coined by Dr. Stephen Levin, I believe he was the one who came up with it, that our structure is the same way. Now a simple, Way to see that, um, I'll leave you guys seated, it's gonna have you do the standing. But if, if I'm standing here, and I'm nice and relaxed, look at, if you look at my left foot, if I take my right hand and I reach behind me, you can see how it drove, drove a force through my system. So everything that we're doing, and what Nick was doing with the ropes, is meant to drive the entire system. So when you're looking at exercise and movement patterns, you wanna know how is it driving the system really from fingernails to toenails. 
And we're purposely moving fast on these. We have a lot for you to do movement-wise, and our, our block is shorter than what we were planning for. So if I'm going fast, bear with me. We'll talk after this if you need any questions answered. Motion versus position. Again, a real important concept. We know that all the joints will go through, again, the three planes of motion. But one thing with motion and position is I have right now I'm standing with my hip joints abducted, abducted. I can take a motion and I can start adducting this hip. So the hip is going, is adducting, but if I stop here, it's still abducted. Now if I take it further, it goes into adduction. And the reason that's important, when we start doing all these different movement patterns, oftentimes you'll have people come in and they have hip issues, especially hip replacement, and if it's a posterior. They don't want them to adduct the hip and they don't want them to internally rotate. But they're talking about the end position, an adducted position versus the joint moving through adduction, you know, where it's actually adducting. So the joint's going to adduct to this point. I'm not, I never get into adduction by going fully through. And the patterns we're going to work on will give you a lot of variations on, on stuff like that. And again, we won't hit up the rest of these. If you have questions, we can follow with those. OK, so life is three-dimensional. We mentioned that. When you're assessing and you're looking at your clients, what's real important to understand what are their goals and what are they trying to accomplish? Now, you can assess them and go through a variety of, you know, watch how their movement patterns are. But what's real key in this whole thing, whoops, hit the wrong one, my bad, is in the, your life. So if I have somebody comes in, sorry, it was, sorry. Hold on. I'm not sure. I'm hitting the laser pointer. It seems that it's hitting that. OK, somebody comes in, and I have a high school football player, and then I have a, I don't know, 40-year-old businessman and a 65-year-old woman. Basically, what their life and the movement patterns that they need in their sphere is going to be different. If I have this 40-year-old you know, business guy, and I'm trying to train him like a 25-year-old football player, that's not good. But knowing, so if I do this right this time, what? I'm hitting the laser pointer, it's changing. <laughs> so I'm not sure. All right, I'll, I won't use the laser pointer. All right, so knowing what is their accomplishment, how much to, within their sphere, and then training that. So we have something we call the buffer zone. And a, way, a simple way of looking at that, if I have a golfer, and that golfer from this position has got to be able to get a nice shoulder turn, if I start training him, and I have to the point within his sphere, I can open his sphere up and drive that he can create the full thoracic rotation, hip rotation, in a wider pattern, as soon as he comes back into his golf swing, it's much easier on his system. So we want to try to find out what is the threshold. And I think the threshold is the key word. If, for example, if I have somebody who could do a lunge reach pattern and they can come here and get back into it, and they're here, I'm not going to be doing much for them. So when you find your client, you want to find their threshold. And everybody's threshold is going to be a little bit different. Find the threshold and gently nudge the threshold. Again, if I have my 65-year-old grandmother who wants to just be able to play with her grandkids and I'm trying to push her threshold like she was 40 years younger, that's not good. And that's where you, as a professional, has to be able to work that and integrate that into their system. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Logan. This is where the fun stuff comes in. <laughs> Am I on? I'm on. All right. We're going to have some little coordination, all right? And I know we can do it. So we're going to clear off this entire area. And we're going to line four lines down on this end. We're going to be moving in lines. We're going to be locomoting. So maybe one line right about here. One line right about here next to the nice Converse All-Stars. Those are solid. I love those. One line right about here and one line over here. If you want to stay seated, you can. I know you, you wouldn't listen to me either way. right? All right, so when we talk about locomotion, is what Vance was talking about earlier, is we have this sphere of movement, okay? A sphere of movement, y'all can move up here. So start one line right here, one line right here, one line over here, one line over here. So spherical, so you have a sphere that you move, but in, if I'm in my sphere, I'm moving around, I'm a basketball player, I'm in triple thread, I'm a linebacker, I'm in my movement sphere. If I can only dominate this space, but if there's something I have to dominate over there, I have to locomote to get there, okay? Now, why, what pattern do we choose? Why would we walk? Why would we run? Why would we shuffle? Why do we choose those certain patterns? Based upon what's happening, right? 
So if I'm walking forward, my eyes are forward, this is a common way to locomote, right? But if I'm having to, if I'm having to move but keep my eyes on something and move with it backwards, I have to be able to move posteriorly. So a lot of your clients, if you have older clients, typically when they fall, it's when they move backwards, right? And how many times do you see people walking down the street like this? You don't see it very much. So function, me and Vance talk about this all the time, function is not something we gain, it's something that we lose. Research shows that by the age of three, you have 90% of your functional abilities. The rest of your life is just gaining, you know, growing and gaining into those uh, uh, strength and power and mobility as you age, okay? So what we're gonna talk about is on a continuum. It's a locomotor continuum. We're gonna start off real easy, and then we're gonna build it up. So here's the first sphere of locomotion. It's called symmetrical locomotion. And in symmetrical locomotion, your right leg is doing exactly what your left leg is doing, okay? So the first pattern is gonna be nice and easy. It's called a walk. We do it all the time. So if I was gonna say, what's the definition of a walk, what would you say? One foot, so I take a step, and then I follow it with another step, and then I follow it with another step. So we're gonna, we're gonna define things, and the reason we're gonna define things is because we're gonna make a good fruit salad, right? And if I just had the definition of red fruit and you put a tomato in my fruit salad, it's going to suck, right? So i got to have definitions that define apple, gala apple versus sweet tango apple versus pink lady versus heirloom tomato. We're going to have all these with our locomotor patterns, and we'll explain that later. So first, defin first pattern that we're going to do is a walk. So all you're going to do is walk down to the end. When you get down to the end, you're going to stop. Next person, give them about a five count before you go. Okay, so we'll walk at a good pace. So go ahead and anterior walk. We're starting off nice and easy. Go ahead, first group. Come on, second group. Third group, we've got a lot of patterns to get through, so we're on the move. So anterior walk, nice and easy. Everybody's got it. Everybody checks off the box. Everybody hasn't reached their threshold yet. Nobody's reached their buffer zone yet, right? So this is our anterior walk, right? But again, like Vance stated earlier, we move in three planes of motion. We're three-dimensional creatures, right? So this is just anterior in the sagittal plane. There's another vector in the sagittal plane. What is that called? Posterior. Posterior. So everybody face that way and walk backwards at a good pace. Walk backwards. Hope we don't reach anybody's threshold already because we're only on the second pattern. But this is a posterior walk. All right? So again, the common way a human would locomote would be anterior. But when would we have to go posterior? Yeah, if we got to look at something, but get out of the way. Like the other day, I'm walking on the trail. All of a sudden, big rattlesnake right in front of me. How did I walk? Did I do this? Oh, no, I did this. I kept my eyes on it the whole time, and I wanted to walk away from it, right? So I chose a posterior walk. Now, what's the other plane? We just did sagittal plane, anterior and posterior. What's another plane of motion? Transverse. Well, that's going to be kind of hard in a group, but we'll do frontal plane. All right? So everybody face this way. So if I'm in the frontal plane and I'm going to walk, here's a problem. i got a leg there. So I either have to cross over that leg or I have to cross behind it. We're going to choose crossing over. So you're going to walk in the frontal plane. So I'm going to keep everything square forward and I'm going to cross over and take a step. Go ahead and try. So just cross over and walk. So why would I choose this plane? Why would I want to walk like this? No Think idea why. I mean, seriously, I can point out... Doing. Exactly. Have you ever walked in New York City when there's like 20, 20 deep sideways? I do this walk all the time. You walk here and then, whoop, I got to get out of that way. I'm coming here. Whoop, I got to get out of that way. I'm coming here. So again, these patterns, the, the whole idea behind these patterns is can your brain learn movement? Because if your brain can't learn movement, how did we learn anything in the old days? We had to move. If I wanted to know what that fruit tasted like, I had to climb the tree. If I wanted to know what was over that hill, I had to hike it. Right? So the way we learn is through movement. So I always say, people say I'm a visual learner, or I'm a kinesthetic learner. I say, that's bullshit. There is none of that. You just have to learn movement. Because in the old days, if you couldn't learn movement, guess what? You were out of the gene pool. Right? Nowadays, you, we've almost manufactured where we don't have to move. Okay, now obviously we can move in the frontal plane the other way. We won't do that for time. Next pattern. And obviously I could move in the transverse plane too. I could walk in the transverse plane. Now we're going to go into a skip. So what's a skip by definition? You got it. So I take a step with one leg, but then I hop on it. So what's a hop? Let's define what a hop is. 
Is this hopping? That's jumping. Jumping is taking off of two feet, landing on two feet. Hopping is taking off on one leg and landing on the same leg, by definition. Because again, if you tell me to do 36 inch box hops, and I'm like, dude, I'm doing it off one leg onto a 30, that's going to be really tough. I'm going to tear an ACL when you meant to take off on two legs. So again, nomenclature is pretty important in our profession. We got to know what the difference between jumps and hops and all that. So here we go. Step and hop, step and hop, anterior. So take a step, hop, take a step, hop, take a step, hop, all the way down. Here we go. Perfect. Excellent. Everybody can do this. We're not at the threshold yet. We're getting close already? Wow. All right. Well, this is going to be a long presentation then. Okay, now we'll skip posterior, right? We'll skip the posterior skip, but I can do the same thing. So here's my definition. Hold on. Here, by definition, we said a step followed by a hop, right? So this is a posterior step followed by a hop, posterior step followed by a hop, posterior step followed by a hop. So let's do a frontal plane. So let's face this way. Let's face this way because we can even it out. So now I'm going to take a step. Hop, step, 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 hop. Go ahead. Join me. Take a step and a hop. Both legs got a hop. There we go. Excellent. We're already at the threshold. We're already, some people, we've met. Excellent. So again, the threshold is not a bad thing. That just tells you where you're at. Okay? That just tells you where you're at. All right, so we had a step and a hop. Now we did it in the frontal plane there. We could do that same step and a hop in a transverse plane, okay? So again, you see how one leg is doing the same thing that the other leg is doing. Okay, the next pattern is a run. So I say, what's the difference between a walk and a run? Well, I can walk pretty fast. Am I running yet? When does it take off to a run? Boom, flight phase. So I, I leap. So a leap is where I take off on one leg and I land on the other leg. And I take off on that leg and I land. So there's a flight phase when I run. See? So definitions, right? Because we're trying to make a fruit salad here. If you just said, oh, it's faster, we just put a tomato in the fruit salad and it sucks. Right? We're trying to, we're trying to know what we're talking about. So let's do an anterior run. We all have it. You can choose your speed. Go. Go. Now when you get down to here, let's change the plane of motion. So a posterior run. So a posterior run, I gotta have a posterior leap followed by a posterior leap. So I gotta be moving posteriorly with leaps. Here we go. Perfect. Beautiful. That's your speed. Excellent. Okay, just because it's having, we're having fun with the with the run here, let's try the frontal plane run. Let's try the frontal plane run, and let's do this. Let's face this way. So again, remember, it's a leap, 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 right? Let's go. Ah, so now it's making sense. Now, do you see this all the time in sports, on the field? You see this all the time with linebackers, right? Because here, like, if I'm trying to keep my eye on a running back, and he runs that way, and I do this, what's going to happen? He's going to change direction. I'm like, oh, crap, right? But if I can do this, oh, we changed all. Oh, I can go this way. Oh, I can change back. I can keep my eyes on him. So you see these patterns aren't just, you know, you go out in a run and you just run this way. But life and sport and everything with your clients is in all three planes of motion. My basketball players used to have to come off cuts. What plane of motion is that? Transverse plane. So transverse plane run. All right, so now... Let's move on to the... One of the things on the coaching on that, and, and watching people go through, when you're running laterally, I'm still square to you. So watch, if you're coaching somebody, and I saw a little bit, they're doing it, but their body's starting to turn. That could be limitations that they have, but also watch when you're coaching, they're not turning them. They're square here, and as they're stepping across, they're stepping across. Totally, because you'll see them, they, can't, they don't have the frontal plane ability. Right. So they do the head turn and run this way. And I'm like, no, it's not running in the frontal plane. That's just turning your head to the right, right? Frontal plane is everything is square right here. Okay, so the next thing. Before we jump into the next slide, I was supposed to have a transition to Logan by saying, how does this involve with the sphere we're talking about? The sphere moves. 
So in everything in life, we talked about the spherical model. I got to take, but when all of a sudden my sphere, it's here, and now we're, what you're doing, the sphere is moving. You still got to control it. I missed that transition oh, before. Oh, sorry. You just got it. There you go. Okay, so now shuffle pattern. So this is the thing I always had trouble with when I was coaching, is people would say, let's shuffle. And I would see people doing this for a shuffle, and then I would see people doing this for a shuffle. I'm like, those are two totally different things, but you just called them the same thing. You just called it a red fruit. You just made a terrible fruit salad. Right? So I want to know what is, what's the difference between this shuffle and this shuffle? What's the difference? What do you we really go back mean? to our nomenclature. This is a step followed by another step. Step, step. But I just happen to not cross my feet. So the action of not crossing your feet is the shuffle. Okay? So we're going to do the way we designed it is we call it a walk and we throw a suffix uffle. A walk uffle. That's what we're doing. We're walk uffling. So face this way and walk up. So take a step followed by another step, but don't let your feet cross. Walk all the way down. And just because you're taking steps followed by other steps doesn't mean you have to move slow. You can walk fast. We can walk fast. I mean, I walk real fast. Right? Perfect. So once you get down here, here's another thing. Every time I said shuffle, it only happened in what plane of motion? What plane of motion is this? The frontal. But I can shuffle in the sagittal plane, right? So we're going to walk uffle in the sagittal plane. So put your left leg forward, and now I take a step. I follow it with another step, but my feet never cross. So I take a step, 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 my feet never cross. Try that. Go ahead. Once you get halfway, let's throw the right leg in front and do that same walk. As you're watching your clients do these, look for asymmetries. They have the left leg forward versus the right leg forward. You may pick up differences in how they're doing it. And again, symmetry is what we're looking for. Okay, now obviously, in the other, in the sagittal plane, we could always go posterior too, right? You see a lot of offensive linemen do this, right? So posterior, that would be a posterior walk off And obviously, we could go in the transverse plane too. So we can have all three planes. But now let's take a skip. Actually, before that, let's take a run. So what was a run? By definition, it was a leap followed by another leap. Let's do continuous leaps, but don't cross your feet. Don't cross your feet. So leap, there's flight phases in there every time, but my feet aren't crossing. So we call it a run uffle. <laughs> a run uffle. So frontal plane run uffle. Facing that way, run. Don't let your feet, don't let your feet cross. Make sure there's flight phases, but your feet can't cross by definition. Beautiful. You got it. Okay, so obviously that running, we can do that same thing. Remember we did in the sagittal plane? I can take leaps and move in the sagittal plane. I can obviously go in the posterior, posterior and anterior. I can obviously go in the transverse plane. But here's the thing. What if I skip? I take a step and a hop and 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 I don't cross my feet. That's totally different, right? So if I just say shuffle, and I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do? You want me to do this? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to go in the sagittal plane? I mean, I got all those. What do you need? If you just say shuffle, you see how shuffle just is a terrible term? Shuffle is a pattern on top of a pattern, okay? So we're going to skip uffle. Face this way. Take a step, hop, step, hop, step, hop, step, hop, step, hop. Don't let your feet cross. Yeah, feet don't cross on that one. Take a step and a hop. I got to go back to the definitions. If you feel like, I don't know if I'm doing it right, that's motor learning. So remember, motor learning, we're in the middle of the woods. We're hunter-gatherers. You can't learn how to do a pattern. You don't get away from the bear. Right? So again, again, we're trying to, what I'm trying to do here, this is what you can do with your clients. You take them down this continuum and you'll see their threshold right in front of you, right? So that's where you train. That was the buffer zone Vance talked about. That's where you train, right? And think about it. If you give them a couple of more patterns, you open up their world. You open up the motor learning world. This is what keeps you young, I guarantee you. I'm like 55 years old, right? That's right. And I can, it's unbelievable. Vance is like 30. He hadn't been doing this. So that's why he looks like it. No. <laughs> so here we go. So we had skip. Obviously, we can go transverse plane. We can go sagittal plane skip. We go sagittal plane skip buffle. Next pattern. Same thing with karaoke. 
So this is the karaoke. And don't say karaoke. Karaoke is that thing you sing at. It's, it's not karaoke, it's karaoke. It's with an A. So karaoke is a weaving pattern. In and out, in and out. So again, this is a walk karaoke, but then this is a run karaoke. So we're going to do a, we're going to skip the walk yoka walk yoka See what I did there, right? Let's put on the run yoka You all know it. So take a leap, followed by another leap, but cross once in front, once behind. Once in front, once behind. Go ahead. What time you got, Vance? We're doing good. Okay, good. Beautiful. Okay, so that's a run with a karaoke pattern. But again, what plane was that in? Frontal. Why can't we karaoke in the sagittal plane? Why not? So what would it look like? I'm going to run. So I take a step, watch, cross behind, cross in front, cross behind, cross in front. And I'm leaping, right? So let's start this. Let's start a walk first. So go back to the walk, step followed by another step, but go through an anterior walk, ioka. Step followed by another step. Cross once in front, once behind. Now the key on this is making sure the foot crosses, foot, foot crosses and crosses. Hey, you got it. So make sure you're getting that foot Dancer. up across. I like it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just a ladder drill. You're right. So that's a walkioka, right? We're walking in a karaoke pattern. You've run in a karaoke pattern. What's our last one? Skip in a karaoke pattern. So remember, it's a step, hop, 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 step, hop. Here we go. Once in front, once behind. There we go. So again, I'm giving you the whole shebang. This is like a year and a half progression. I'm giving it to you in like 20 minutes. <laughs> So again, right about now, anytime we present this, people are like, what the hell am I doing? And I say, it, you, it goes back to the definitions. It goes back to the definitions. A walk is a step followed by another step. I can't argue that. A skip is a step and a hop followed by another step and a hop. Can't argue that. A run is leap and leap and leap and leap. We put it in all three planes of motion, right? That's the first thing we do. Then we add a shuffle on top of it, all those patterns. And then we add a karaoke on top of that, all those patterns. Last one we're going to do, okay? We're going to do a runny yoka. So we're running in a karaoke pattern, but we're going posterior. Now, hold it. What does this look like? You ever see defensive backs do that? That's a defensive back drill. All right? Now, you might have, a, you might have an individual that has trouble going backwards, right? They feel like they're going to be unstable. You start them off with a walk. Maybe you take it to a walk uffle. Maybe you take it to a walk yoka. Maybe you take it to a posterior skip. Maybe last you take it to a run yoka. Okay? So let's try that. So watch, cross over in front, cross over in front. You gotta spin the hips. Here we go. Good, try to stay square to the front. If anybody can name the dance that this is, you get bonus points. You'll all sign waivers, right? There you go. Can anybody name the dance? You don't know? What's the dance? The tango! The tango. So again, okay, so we're, we're like into this mind where we go watch competitive stuff. Like I want to watch sports and stuff. Have you ever gone to the ballet? There's some freak athletes there. And so what is dance? What is dance? Dance is just movement. It's movement coordinated to look graceful and for the eye to behold. There's no competition. It's artistic, and that's what movement is. When you watch a great athlete play or a great person move, it's artistic. It's not like, hold, hold this up and in, robot. No, it's none of that. It's effortless. It's effortless, right? I just move and react. It's effortless, and this is what we're trying to build in the brain. Movement is subconscious. We're trying to build that. You're up. Okay, so one of the things, bringing this back down, so obviously he's escalated these, he says it's going to be a year training to get people to even to this point, but what happens when you have a client who's 70, 80 years old? Can I borrow you? Okay, let's get you here and just face back into them. So now I've got somebody, I want to have them just do a simple walk-off So give me a walk-off walk to your left, so just a walk, your walking shuffle. 
So hold them. Keep a you know, keep be close. Safety is your concern. Same thing. Let's do the walking. Let's let's do your posterior um, posterior walk off stuff like that. So they're coming. So make sure as you're working with your clients. Again, so this is we do this with every single hip replacement, every single senior who comes in, anything. You could do this from the youngest ages right on through. But understand where the threshold is and how you're going to keep them safe. Um, a couple stroke people we have come in and we're doing these patterns with, you want to be close and holding on to a little bit of shirt because you'd be surprised this is very difficult for them and you'll see them starting to teeter. Now what we're going to do is, let me put this down real quick. What do you need? Yeah, uh, throw me, let's go med ball to start. All right, so you've learned some of the patterns. We're going to go back down to the walking patterns. So I can use implements. So now we've got the walking patterns down, and I can do, so we know we have three planes of motion. We know the shuffle, the walk off is a frontal plane motion. I can add a sagittal plane chop to that motion. I could also take, take that, and I can drive a rotational motion through it, or at the top, I can run a frontal plane motion. I can use a med ball. I can have somebody tethered to a cord. I'm out there, they're holding the cord and they're driving the cord. Or the cord, actually, Logan, grab that cord if you don't mind. Or the cord behind. So once they start getting the patterns down, just start thinking, well, what can I do to start moving their body around a little bit? Um, you want to do it again? Uh, take these and face forward. So we're just going to switch around. There you go. And again, let's use, let's use your, um, let's use your, uh, uh, lateral walk off. I'm sorry, just lateral walk. Okay, so walk is going to be crossed, the so right foot over top. So now I want you to press. Start driving presses. So I can now have him do it. He has a little bit of resistance. Now let's go back to your right. And he's doing it. So, and I also could start now playing with this and start moving him. So as they progress, you can find different ways and different tools. I'm um, going to grab that dumbbell quick. Oh, you got it. So, actually, I should grab two of these. I got you. Again, dumbbells. So whether I have one or two, as I'm dry, as I'm moving through my planes. Thanks. So if I'm going to go, it doesn't matter. If, so I'll, I'll, I'll just do a forward shuffle. Let me back up a bit. So as I'm coming, I can go into my patterns and drive the, the dumbbells three dimensionally. Before. Um, I think it was Jonathan was doing the press, holding a dumbbell here. I could take a kettlebell, a dumbbell, hold it completely up, and now I'm going through my shuffles, and I'm going to drive these, and I'm at my threshold with this weight. So, so trying to think, just be creative. Find where they're at, and as they start progressing, think, well, what else can I do? Again, when we talked about the sphere and the strength part, the sphere is getting bigger. What can I do to put an external load on them? to try to take them out of that comfort zone and push the threshold and just be creative. There's a million ways you can do it, okay? Perfect. All right, now you're gonna get into the, what you just did, it was the easy stuff, yeah. here comes the fun stuff. Okay, so going into the rabbit hole, right? Going into the rabbit hole. So asymmetrical locomotion, I'll tell you how this came about. I'm working with a stroke patient. You know, ever work with a stroke patient before? Got it. So one side's affected, right? And so we, he was, his only goal was I wanna walk and run again. So I start him on the locomotor continuum. We go through walks, we go through walk uffles, we go through walk yokas. Then we master all that, all three planes. Guy's doing great. So now I'm like, okay, now we're gonna skip. Okay, we're gonna try skipping, which is a step and a hop and a step and a hop. So I asked him to skip, and this is what I saw. So is that a, is that a skip? Not by definition, right? But what is that? That was my question. So I was like, wait, he's stepping and hopping and stepping, step, hop, step. So he's skipping on one leg, but he's walking on the other leg. So instead of saying, oh, that's wrong, you can't do a skip, I said, dude, you just came up with a skulk. <laughs> you just came up with a skulk. You skipped and walked, let me see if I can do that. Now can you do that on the other side? Can you do that posteriorly? Can you do that in the frontal plane? Can you do that in the transverse plane? So that's what we're gonna do. So asymmetrical locomotion, remember symmetrical was one leg is doing the same thing as the other leg. 
Now the legs are doing totally different things. So then I start researching brain, right? You have this corpus callosum in between your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere. These are the people that can pat their head and rub their stomach, right? Your right side can do stuff independently of your left side. This is athleticism, folks. This is how I can show one of the best athletes in the world right now something one time and he masters it right then. He can just look at it and learn it, right? He has the ability to learn. It's not that he's the strongest, that he's the fastest, that he's the biggest. He is all those things but he's the guy that can learn movement the best. So this, this is the fountain of youth. This is, how you, this is how you protect your movement for a lifetime. If you can asymmetrically move like this into your 80s, I guarantee you will never fall. You will never fall. And if you fall, you'll get right back up. You won't have a fractured hip, right? Because that's the number one injury that elderly patients have, right? So here we go. Skip on our right leg, walk on our left leg. So your right leg's going to have a step and a hop, but your left leg's going to walk. Let's go. Perfect. There you go. Good. It's almost like you got a little limp, right? Perfect. So you all skunked. You did a new pattern you didn't even know existed, right? Step and a walk. Okay, so we're skipping on our right leg. We're walking on our left leg. Now we did that anteriorly. Can we do that posteriorly? So let's change it. Let's go posteriorly, but this time let's skip on our left leg. Let's walk on our right leg. Skip on the left, walk on the right. Skip on the left, walk on the right. Beautiful. Perfect. Excellent. Think about what you're doing with your brain right now. Your left side of your body is doing a pattern Those are good. totally different than the right side of your body. There you go. So think of the communication between the corpus callosum, integrating the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Beautiful. Beautiful. Why isn't this the foundation of every PE class from grades first through fifth? I don't know. Kind of better than doing the, the old school, remember the hang that you like hang for a certain amount of time? This might be a little bit more effective, don't you think? I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> right? Okay, so now obviously we could skulk in the frontal plane. I could take a step and a hop in the frontal plane. I can skulk in the transverse plane. Step, hop, but walk on the other side. So we're not going to go there. Now we're going to combine. So I'm looking at him, and I'm like, you just skipped and walked. Can you skip and run? Can you skip on one leg and run on the other? So can you do this? Can you step, hop, leap? Step, hop, leap. Step, hop, leap. Step, hop, leap. Step, hop, leap. So left leg skips, right leg runs. Let's do it. Got to have flight phases. Got to get off the ground. I think we found thresholds. That's the threshold. We got it. Okay, so if, can someone name this track and field event? Triple jump. So what is a triple jump? They run, they run, they run, they run. They step, hop, leap, boom, right? They land. So think about if you had a triple jumper and you could do continuous triple jumps. That might be a pretty good training drill, just saying. Instead of just doing it one time, right? Let's try it again. So think about it. Nomenclature, right? Red fruit. Apples, let's make sweet tango versus gala apples here. So step, hop, leap. Leap, hop, leap. Leap, hop, leap. Leap, hop, leap. Leap, hop, leap. Try it. Very good. Better. Go. Better. Good. Beautiful. Okay. That's only one plane of motion. That was only anterior. Let's try that posterior. So let's do this. Step, hop, leap. Step, hop, leap. Step. So look, skip on the left, run on the right. Skip on the left, run on the right. Stay down here. Okay. Got to have leaps. Did Perfect. Be These are tough. Good job. Okay, so now you're learning movement trigonometry right now. You're learning movement calculus. All right, how long did it take you to learn calculus? It's still, I'm still doing it, right? So again, how did we learn math? We started with addition, then we went to subtraction, then we went multiplication, division, then we started getting into geometry, then we got into this. This, I'm exposing you to trigonometry, right? You've never taken math and I'm saying, boom, calculus, right? So this is a progression, but I'm showing you the end game. This is a continuum, symmetrical, then you get into these asymmetrical patterns, right? The last pattern is not, I did skip and walk, I did skip and run. Now what if I walk and run? 
Walk on one leg, run on the other. You're like, what? What does that look like? Well, I take a step with no flight phase, then I take a leap. Step, leap, step, leap, step, leap, step, leap, step, leap, step, leap. leap. Try it out. Beautiful. We got that one down. Okay, we're going into the frontal plane with this one. Beautiful. Okay, so now look, think, like, when would I use this? Oh, somebody sprains their ankle. They're trying to rehab this ankle. You can have them explosive off the non-leg, slow on the non-dominant leg, right? So you can asymmetrically change the stress on the body. It's crazy, huh? It's wild. Let's go frontal plane. So watch. Crossover, step, then I'm going to leap. Step, leap, step, leap, step, leap, step, leap, step, leap, step, leap. Here we go. What time you got, Vance? We're doing good. About 10 minutes left. Perfect. I got like three more. Beautiful. So again, we had skalk. We had skun. And this one is fun to say because it sounds like you have a speech impediment. One. I'm going to do some one So walk, run. Walk, run. That's where it comes from. Now, we had all three planes of motion. But remember that shuffle and karaoke thing? Whoa. What if we throw that on there? So we're going to start off with a skalk offle in the frontal plane. So watch. Simple. Step, hop, step. Step, hop, step. Step, hop, step. Step, hop, step. All without crossing my feet. See if we can pick it up. You're surprising yourself. I like it. There you go. Very good. Now, a year from now, at the next conference, the homework is to have all these patterns down. That's the homework. Okay, so that was a skock, that was a skock uffle. Now, obviously, we could scun uffle, but we won't do it. I'll just show it to you, right? So I can skip, run, skip, run. See, I never cross my feet, right? I can skock, I can one, I can leap, step, leap, step, leap, step, leap, step. I can one uffle, right? Now, what if I throw karaoke on it? So I can skock yoka in the sagittal plane where I'm skipping on my left, I'm walking on my right, Right? I can scun Ioka where I leap, step, and I'm hopping on my right leg, and I'm leaping on my left leg, right? And I can one Ioka. Leap, walk, leap, walk. Right? All in the brain. All in the brain. It's just patterns. It's a way to learn movement. So that's the end game. So we just went from A to Z, right? Now you're never going to take a client down that. So I'm going to tell you, I presented this maybe 20 times so far, all right? And in all the presentations, I've only found one individual that could do all the patterns on the first shot. And I remember the day. She was a, about a 5'8 girl, great shape, over to my right side. And I'm watching her do all the asymmetrical, and I'm like, man, she's killing it. It's like, that looks pretty good. And I'm like, wait till the asymmetrical, right? Like, what the? She's doing them all, perfect. So I'm like, afterwards, I'm like, I gotta talk to this girl. So I come up, I'm like, who are you? Like, what do you do? She's like, oh, I'm a professional ballerina. I've, done, I've danced for like 20 years of my life. She goes, I've done every single one of those patterns. Now, we didn't call them all those things, but she's like, I could do it. She goes, in an audition, in a one-hour audition, I have to learn 400 novel movements in one aud- novel movements and be able to master them in an hour. This girl could learn movement like nothing. But you know why she didn't play sports? She goes, I'm not into competition. I like to express myself artistically. And I was like, that, I got to get out of my realm and get into that realm. Because that's where it's at, right? That's all I got. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, uh, Logan did touch on this. So we started, so on the spectrum of moving, everything's going to go from easy to hard and simple to complex. He started you out with walking. That's pretty easy and pretty simple. And as you finished up, you were very, it was very hard and very complex. So, of course, as you're learning these, on yourself, now again, what you're going to do with your clients will obviously be different. You're all pretty fit. So play with these. Work with, work with them. It's a great add, additive to what you're doing with your current programs. And it's 
as you understand them, where you'll understand how to apply them to your clients. Will you have any clients doing all these asymmetricals? Not unless you're working with some athletes. So given understanding that, knowing where you can fit these in is always um, will be good. Um, tools, we kind of touched on that. If you're going to be doing some of these things, we touched on how to use tools to kind of just change some of the dynamics of that. Um, cognitive, the cognitive function and movement, um, one of the things, so why don't you let it line up with me? Yeah. And let's just, so, if, so you could have a client, and again, even with your older client, let's just, let's just go, uh, let's go walk off full. And now I have my client has to mirror me, so forth, and now I'm going to start moving it. So have them mirroring. Now again, for you guys, it's probably going to be pretty easy, and you would do it more in the running patterns. But for somebody who's older, somebody who's had some issues, that's, you'd be surprised how tough that is when you're trying to get them to try to change direction and visually watch you. You could also play with that and say, okay, as I'm going to be doing this, if I step towards you, you're going to have to, you, I want you to step back toward me. It's a little, little okay. space. So I'm going to come, he's going to come, and I'm going to come back. So you just kind of change those parameters. It'll be easy to do that one on the lateral. But change them up, make them react, make them to not only, here's your pattern, do it change the pattern as they're doing it. So now they're coming from here, boom, from there right into a walking shuffle. Maybe from, from here, they're gonna move right into here and they're gonna change up and get, get, get them into their posterior karaoke. This, this is what we, we were talking about this last night, like the definition of coordination. Coordination is, is being able to do these patterns, like I can do the patterns. But now in sport and in life, we have agility. Agility is doing the pattern but being thrown out of the pattern and having to change the pattern based upon the environment. So what you're really working on is you're working on coordination with the patterning and as Vance is talking about this cognitive ability is agility. It's the ability to be thrown out of the pattern and be able to execute the coordinated pattern in this chaotic environment. Okay, same thing, catching drills, persons, whatever pattern you choose, and now you're just tossing a tennis ball or a light ball back and forth, or making them as they're doing their thing, they've got to you know, do a 180 turn, or potentially do, as they're shuffling, do a, a 360 turn. And again, it's just easy to hard, simple to complex. You're gonna just keep up in the ante to find out where their threshold is. And again, if you know that this client's susceptible to falling, stay real close and hold on to some T-shirt. That's it. Um, we're going to be over at the Human Kinetics for any questions. We got the next talk, so we're going to get out on time. Actually, we did pretty good. Oh, we killed it. All right.